there welcome to my channel today's video is in collaboration with my friend Tracy country charm by Tracy is her YouTube channel such cute rustic country crafts you will love it you need to get on over there and check it out as soon as you're finished with my video but for now let's get started this is project number one As you gather by the picture we're making cute fabric watermelon in a basket so first up is the pattern I basically just kind of drew like a pizza slice and about a third away from the top I drew a line to make two separate pieces so I've got two different sizes here and you're gonna need what I did is I had three pieces of different fabric pattern uh, for the bottom and three separate fabric patterns for the top so you need two pieces per bottom and two pieces for the top you pin it onto your fabric and of course cut them out so I've got my two pieces here both top and bottom and this is my other smaller set one set we're going to sew and in one set I'll show you how to do it without sewing so I have some black buttons here they were not originally black I had to spray paint them and I'm using this crochet string you can find it over near the yarn in Walmart or if you don't want to use that you can use just regular thread but I'm using this crochet string because it's really thick and I can go in through one button and out to <laughs> the back of it and that button is sewn on uh, the buttons are simulating watermelon seeds now if you don't uh, or if you want to buy those buttons at like Dollar Tree those kind of pastel -y ones you can certainly do that and spray paint in black as I had to spray paint my own buttons black that works perfectly fine and you just sew the buttons on in any cute order that you want on your watermelon so then I'm gonna go ahead and tie it off in the back here you want to do this first before sewing your pieces together and then the next thing we're going to do is sew our top, our rind, to the bottom of the watermelon. And you're going to put right sides together and then just sew it right along the top and join the two pieces together on both uh, slices. Just like that. And now we're going to go and make some cute little stitches on our watermelon. Again, I'm using white crochet thread from Walmart. Dollar Tree does have some string like in the automotive sections, kind of a cream color. That would work perfectly. And what I'm doing is just making some cute little wonky stitches to kind of bring together the rind and the juicy watermelon part so it looks really cute and I'm making long short slanted sideways backways whatever ways you want making five stitches just to like I said join the two pieces together once that's done I'm gonna tie it off and then we will sew our slices together now normally you would put your right sides together sew it and then flip it inside out but I'm not going to do that because I want this to look rustic so I'm sewing all the way around the watermelon wrong sides together so I don't have to flip it and leaving about a two inch opening for stuffing later and then I want to make the watermelon a little more rustic so I'm just pulling on the fabric all the way around the watermelon to kind of distress the edges fray the edges a little bit just to kind of give it that cute rustic charm and then I'm gonna stuff my watermelon through that opening and you just stuff it as thick or as thin as you want and the stuffing I'm using I buy those cheap Walmart pillows and I cut them open and that's how I get my stuffing because it's a lot more uh, or a lot less expensive than buying actual stuffing in the sewing section so once that's stuffed you sew your opening closed and that's our watermelon we're going to decorate it a little bit this is sisal it's really thin thin pieces like raffia or excelsior that like Tracy uses if you don't have this you could use pieces of thread and I'm using my beacon Fabri-Tac glue to glue that on and another a uh, little bit more of that white string like we did the stitches with made it into a bow and glued that on and the watermelon is done so here is the non stitching version you can use beacon Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue I'm gonna use hot glue here because it's quicker you're gonna hot glue right sides together at the top to get your rind on to your watermelon part and then as you fold it up crease it so it's got a nice crease hot glue your buttons on again any style you want them on there and instead of sewing the string I've cut different lengths of the string five pieces 
and we're just gonna hot glue those pieces right on. And it kind of gives you the sewing look without sewing. So if you're not a sewer, this option is for you. And then once this is done, you're just gonna decorate it. Just I'm not gonna show that part. You're gonna decorate it just like we did on the first one. You know, put a cute little bow at the top. If you don't wanna use any of the sisal or any threads up there, a cute little bow would be just perfect. So there it is, you can see the difference. And then we're just going to uh, hot glue our watermelon together, leaving an opening again because we still wanna stuff it. And then once you've stuffed it, you will hot glue the opening closed. See, I'm just leaving a little opening there, right there to stuff it with. And that is your non-sewing version, very easy. So we're gonna decorate the basket. The basket I got was from Dollar Tree. It's one of those white wire baskets and I had spray painted it, I think last summer because I was gonna use it on something and I never did and I pulled it out this time and that's what we're going with. And both of these, um, ribbons I got from Hobby Lobby and Joann's. I don't know where I got this one from. It's this really stiff stuff I've had for years. Going to bring out the sisal again, a little bit more um, thin twine. This is some fabric I'm pulling apart, an old tablecloth I got at a garage sale. I pull it apart for texture. This tag I made on my computer, I mean the font is called Smackover from Defont.com and I just printed it out onto cardstock and then I cut it out into a tag shape, sewed around the edges and then distressed the edges with the open end of scissor blades as you see here. So my ribbons here, are, these are wired ribbons. I cut the wire ribbons off and then I pulled all around the edges like I did on the watermelon fabric to distress the edges. And so I'm getting this first one on here. I thought this check would look really cute with all the polka dots kind of hot glued it in the back a little bit so it stays in place, tied into a bow, and then hot glue the front. And then I'm tying my other ribbon into, it's kind of a burlap ribbon, actually a Christmas ribbon, I believe, but it was perfect colors with reds and browns. Getting that tied into a bow, distressed all the edges on this just as I did the fabric. This is some thin twine. I've got three pieces here. I'm gonna tie those into a great big bow and then kind of separate all the little, um, pieces at the top there and then this thick stuff yeah I like I said I don't even remember where I got it it's so thick and stiff but you're able to scrunch it up really really good so it works nice kind of gives it a lot of texture so I'm going to tie my other little twine bow on there or glue it on I mean and then get this little funky textured up piece of ribbon on there and then some of the sisal. This is brown sisal this time. I had a bag that had white and brown in it. A little more thin twine. I'm tying it through the tag and gonna make a little bow at the top. And I apologize, I know this is awful fast, but this is a really long video with three projects. So I'm trying to speed it up a little bit. Pause if you need to, if you wanna remake this. Adding that little tablecloth on there. It was a tablecloth. I got it at a garage sale. I tore it up in pieces because it was like a dollar, had a big hole in it. Makes great texture. So I'm just adding that in and around under the bow, adding the tag on top. The end result, you're gonna see a wooden watermelon sticker on front of that bow when I show you the, the end, how it looks all pretty. Um, because I forgot to put that on there, but they were at Dollar Tree. They were wood stickers with pineapples and orange slices and watermelon slices, so you'll see that. I added some Spanish moss in the bottom of the basket and I'm arranging all my watermelon and here comes the final result. There's that cute little sticker wood sticker like I said from Dollar Tree. Hope you enjoyed this project. I love how it came out so rustic country cute. Just love it. Love all the different patterns and textures and you can make as many watermelons you want. I believe I made four of the small and large. So let's get on to project number two. I'm going to be starting with this bamboo wreath from Dollar Tree and what you want to do is cut off all the twine so it's nice and open. I've already got a piece of wire at the bottom. What I've got is this rusty wire I've rusted myself and I will put the link down below for you because I do have a tutorial on it. And I'm wrapping the wire around the bottom as tight as I can to hold it all together at the bottom since you've cut the twine all off. 
I'm going to wrap it around several times and then kind of twist it and tuck the end into the um, bamboo there into the twigs and then I'm taking another piece because I'm just grabbing at the top where I want to attach it together both ends together and I'm twisting the wire again and securing that and I believe what I did what I forgot to say is when I took all the bamboo off I kind of separated it out so that the top was kind of open and I broke a few sticks out of it and everything like that so I kind of had an open area at the top that I could pull back together here and wire like you just saw me do Okay, so top and bottom is wired and I'm pulling out some little pieces on the side here just to kind of make it look like the other side and I decided I need to pull a few more of the sticks up. There's too many hanging off one side. So I'm going to do the same thing with that rusty wire and I chose the rusty, wa rusty wire because it looked, the color was so similar to the wreath you couldn't even see it. So I'm using air bait clay here and I made some little eggs, let it dry overnight and I'm using the two colors of cream paint here, this oyster white by Delta and this brown, uh, burnt umber brown by um, Apple Barrel and I'm the umber brown, once I painted the white onto the eggs, two coats, the brown I am watering down so I can get it real watery onto the paintbrush and then I can flick the paintbrush, tap it and it'll make little speckles on the eggs. And I just do that all the way around. And here's the eggs all finished. So I've got my little wreath here. I'm gonna, there's all sorts of supplies you could use. Reindeer moss from Dollar Tree, the Spanish moss. I've got this purple wisteria and this other um, a bouquet at Walmart. These came from Dollar Tree. Any leaves and things that you want to use works perfectly wonderful. These were flowers that my cousin gave me, but Dollar Tree of course has all sorts and tons of flowers. These are pit berries from my supply, but Dollar Tree has these at Christmas time. And these are paper flowers, paper mulberry flowers. I've had in my supply forever, but you can get paper flowers at like Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Joann's in the craft section. These pieces are actually from out of my yard. Um, we have a great big, you know, a tree in our yard and I was able to pull off moss and everything from it. So I'm using this glue gun and um, gluing, hot gluing this nest on. This nest came from Michael's. It's a pre-made nest. If you don't have one, you can make your own out of like the Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. But I'm using the glue, hot glue on it first because I want it set right away so I can begin to decorate and then I'm going to finish up with my Beacon Fabri-Tac and these are just some extra sticks from the wreath and I'm poking them into the nest so that they stick out a little bit and then I'm going to add some Spanish moss along the bottom and the top and the inside of the nest and really this is just up to your interpretation of how you want to decorate it. I'm just kind of trying to hide the edges of the hot glue gun and stuff like that so I'm tucking the moss in and around. The nest is kind of thin in the center so I'm tucking the moss in there just to cover things up and now I'm bringing in these great moss pieces that I got in my yard and I'm kind of gluing all these in just to make the uh, nest look a little more homemade. These sticks are from my yard with the moss on them already. I don't remember what this stuff is called, but I just thought it looked cool again from my yard. So it's all free, just tucking it in to make this look like a natural type uh, nest. And these are again, some paper flowers from my supply. Again, you can get paper flowers at uh, the main um, craft stores and Dollar Tree even has packages of little paper flowers. I think I show you those in a minute. Here's a little pine cone I'm sticking in here out of one of the packages of the moss from Dollar Tree. I'm cutting this uh, vine up, these paper flower vines and tucking them in. Again, your own interpretation how you want this. A little more moss to cover up the glue. Super cute. Adding in some pit berries here and there, just little pieces. This is some of that wisteria from Walmart. I thought it would be really pretty to tuck in. I'll start with some more of these pit berries on a vine. I'm just gonna tuck those in and around the bamboo and tuck them and glue them so that you can hide the glue. These are the flowers my um, cousin gave me, but again, Dollar Tree has really cute smaller flowers you can tuck in here. Just find areas you can tuck in and around. And the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue works wonderfully in here. 
tucking in some of these paper flowers. I think some of these flowers she actually got at Goodwill and didn't need them all. And I was asking her if she had some smaller type flowers, so she gave these to me. Um, so I wouldn't have to go out and buy any. Just trying to use what I have in my supply, tucking in some more of those cute paper flowers. These are from um, that other bouquet of flowers at Walmart. I just took some of the greenery off. So you can take greenery off those cute frosted looking flowers that you get at Dollar Tree and tuck those in. And just tuck the flowers and the berries and the greenery wherever you want them, however it suits your likeness, tuck them in. It'll be super cute any way you do this. Adding in a few more of these sticks to kind of come up around the side. I just wanted to put some thicker uh, outdoors onto the wreath, so to speak. And I love that curly stuff that's on those sticks. So I wanted to add some more of that in. And I'm gonna come around and kind of do the same thing at the top. So it kind of brings around the flowers from the bottom and brings the whole wreath together. So I'm using the same kind of pieces on the top as the bottom, the flowers, the wisteria, the little pieces of greenery. I took off the bouquet. And again, just however you like it, it'll be beautiful any way you wanna put it together. It's your vision. You'll love it, I promise. You can do this. This is my first time making one of these wreaths and I think it came out okay. So if I can do it, you can do it. Tucking in a few more flowers and I wanted to stay pretty neutral on here so that can go in anyone's decor. I love this wreath and like the watermelon slices and uh, but I am gonna be selling them, pack them away for next year's uh, Spring Craft Bazaar. So I want these all to look really nice and that's why I'm choosing the beacon so I know it'll stay together really well and the glue is easier to hide and you don't see it like the hot glue. Looking really cute. So we're gonna get our eggs and stuff together. I'm gonna glue in our eggs and I've got a little burlap butterfly down here. I have a package of these butterflies I got at uh, Michael's a long time ago, but I'll show you these other flowers and butterflies that you can get at Dollar Tree. I see them there all the time. Just kind of tucking my eggs in, putting the butterfly on. I wanted to put a bird in there. I just did not have the right bird in my supplies, so I decided just to do an eggs nest, right? Here's the butterflies and flowers you can get from Dollar Tree. Really super cute. They work fine. So now we're going to make a bow and stuff at the bottom. I'm going to bring in all the same elements I used on the watermelon basket. I'm gonna use the thin twine, gonna use that little uh, uh, tablecloth I tore up, use some thicker twine. I am using a little bit different uh, burlap ribbon for the main ribbon. I'm bringing up this thick, or this, yeah, this really st um, stiff stuff that I crinkled up, just like on the watermelon, trying to kind of use the same thing through all the projects so you don't have to keep getting out a bunch of stuff. Deciding what I want on the front, I'm going to put one more kind of thin bow of twine on the front of the bow and then I'm going to add in, I cut another piece of that paper flower off and I'm tucking that in there and kind of wrapping it over the top of the bow to kind of hide the glue from the uh, last twine bow I put on here. And here is the end result. I think it's so rustic and pretty. Looks cute like on a shelf how I have hanging here. I just love how it turned out so pretty and rustic so springtime summery i think that um yeah i couldn't envision this any better i don't know i might have to make a couple of them for the craft bazaar but I, again i just love how this turned out and i hope you like it too and i really hope you try one okay now we're going to be moving on to project number three This project I got this thick wood piece at Dollar Tree and these um, craft sticks you can use the larger or the smaller ones and as well as these wood flowers these heart wood stickers that I got from Valentine's Day and this is just a base I got at Goodwill it was half price for 50 cents I'll be using wood slices from Arteza I'll have that link down below for you if you're interested and what I need to do, I found a drill bit because I want to drill holes into the wood so that the wood dowels will um, sit up properly and not have any movement to them. And I'm going to be using the long wood dowels and just cut them up because my drill bit is a little bit too big for the shorter ones. 
Um, so I just go ahead with the longer ones and then cut them up. So I'm drilling my holes, getting them down deep enough so there's no movement. I'm gonna do two flowers in one vase and one flower in the other vase. And I'm using this scrapbook paper by Graphic 45. It's a real pretty floral paper. Um, and I'm gonna be doing pinks and browns. You can use any papers that you want. And what I'm gonna do is trace around all the pieces that I need and for each flower, you're gonna need three, you need one package of those wood flowers from Dollar Tree and you're gonna use three flowers per flower. Is that understandable? You're gonna trace around every uh, piece, top and bottom, every base here. And then once I trace it, then I go in about an eighth of an inch and I make a new pattern line so that my pieces are a little bit shorter on my bases and my wood slices are a little bit shorter uh, than the actual piece so that you see some of that come through. And I'll explain that here in a minute. On the flowers, I'm just tracing two pieces front and back. And I've got my wood slices here. I'm gonna trace those and then I'm gonna make a new margin. I'm gonna go in about an eighth of an inch and make a new pattern line, just like this all the way around. So that when I glue this piece onto the wood slice, I don't cover up the whole wood slice. So that's what I was trying to get at earlier. And then I've got some heart pieces here. Some are from my supply and then I use um, quite a few of them from the Dollar Tree, those ones I showed you earlier. And again, I'm making a new pattern line. And then I'm distressing around the edges of all my papers. So I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades and I'm scraping them along all the pieces so they get that nice distressed edge. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that for every uh, piece that I'm working with here. And then I'm gonna take all those pieces to the sewing machine when I am done. I just love doing this. It adds quite a bit of texture. Those of you that might be new to my channel, I do this on 99. I'm going to up my thing here. I think my last video I said 99.5. I'm 99.8%. I distress all the edges with scissors and sew around all the pieces as well. I just love to do this. I think it just adds that rustic look. There's my sewing around it. Here's my wood dowels. Again, I'm going with the two longer ones. I'm actually cutting the two long ones down to the same length as the two short ones. But like I said, my drill bit was quite big and these, those shorter ones were a little bit smaller, so they were too wobbly in the hole. So here I just marked my uh, pieces where the holes were. So before I glue them down, I wanna paint all my pieces with this oyster white paint. I'll do two coats all around the sides and a little bit on uh, the top and bottom, just around the perimeters, because when you distress the edges of the papers, it shortens them a little bit. So you might tend to see some of that wood around the top or the bottom. So I always just kind of paint a little bit around it. Also gonna paint my sticks. I think I leave a little bit on one of the sticks. I'm gonna paint um, just because I end up wood gluing that. Um, so I leave a little opening on the sticks and paint around the front and back piece of the uh, flowers just a little bit. And now I'm taking some sandpaper and distressing all the edges so that some of that wood will peek through the paint. And now we're gonna get ready to glue all this down using again my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. This is the bottom portion. So see how I cut it a little bit uh, smaller than the actual piece of wood so that some of that wood shines through. this on here and line up the holes. I want to get this on so that I can get my wood dowels in. Here comes the top piece on the other circle on my circle base. A little bit of the wood showing and then the bottom piece I didn't bother like trimming that shorter. I just left it the actual size of the bottom since again it's on the bottom. I'm going to use wood glue here to get my dowels in. I'm just going to poke my dowels into the wood glue here and then twist it into my drilled holes and then wipe off all the excess glue. And then I just let that sit for a few minutes. It's pretty tight. Um, I know wood glue, you know, you need to kind of clamp it and let it dry for, you know, overnight's best, but these are pretty tight and secure. So I'm going to go ahead and keep, go ahead and uh, design on them. So I need to figure out a way to get my stick to fit onto the flower. So I sanded the top part off and I'm laying it on the flower and I'm tracing around about two inches from the top around that dowel. 
and these wood pieces are really thin so I've got it here uh, my little pattern drawn and now I can just cut out that little piece using a tool to kind of bend the rest out and then I'm going to draw on one more flower remember we're using three flowers per flower and I'm going to cut out again that little portion there tool to kind of break the rest of it out I'm going to do that on all three flowers. I'm just showing you on one. And there my dowel now fits inside nicely. So now I'm going to glue all three flowers together. And again, these wood flowers can be found at uh, Dollar Tree. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and glue a piece of my pattern paper onto the front of the flower. Get it all nice and pretty. I chose pinks and browns because it's going with my two-tiered tray that you'll see at the end here, and so I kind of wanted it to match. So I've glued my paper on the front of the wood slice, and see, because I made it smaller, now you can kind of see the wood slice a little bit. And again, I'm going to glue my little pattern onto my heart, my wood heart here. Glue that onto the front of the wood slice that got glued onto the flower, and there's our cute little rustic flower. Again, I'm going to take some wood glue, kind of pop it in here. In the, onto the dowel and then put it right into that little space we made and this I will um, clamp together here in a minute I'm going to glue the bottom piece on I've got it kind of laying up on my sanding block here so it's nice and level for a minute and then I will do a clamp down and let it sit Now I do this on all the rest of the flowers because we're not going to go through all of them so I let that sit overnight and then now we're moving on to the next day and I did those two flowers the exact same. I glued, you know, the wood slice on. Um, the one flower down below, I have another smaller wood slice. I just glued right on top. And then this wood heart here, I punched some holes in it. Added twine through it, a little bit of sisal. And now we're just going to make a cute little bow right over the top of that sisal. I threaded it like a button. Wrap the bow around that sisal. And then we'll glue that right onto the top of the flower. I didn't want to show you these two because it was basically the same as the other one, but I wanted to show you this cute little button I made out of those wood hearts from Dollar Tree. And we're going to add another little twine bow underneath the other one. I'm not adding as much on this uh, one because I didn't want it to get too, yep, my stiff stuff here. I didn't want it to get too um, gaudy with a lot of fabric and stuff because these are so simple. Adding a little bit of the sisal here and then adding my crushed up ribbon and adding another thick, that's a thick twine that you can get at Dollar Tree. Adding that right on top. And I'm adding a couple of those little wood hearts from Dollar Tree at the bottom. And I decorated the single flower kind of the same way, twine and the raffi, or not the raffi, the twine and the sisal and all that um, in the bows just to make it all look really cute. I'm gluing these kind of sideways, there they are, and here is the end result. Aren't those cute on both sides of my two-tiered tray? Now, if you want to know how to make this two-tiered tray, I have two versions in a video for you, tutorial how to make both of them using all supplies from Dollar Tree, so I'll have that link for you. But this is how it looks with these cute wood flowers flanking both sides of the tray. I think it is adorable. I really hope you enjoyed this collab today and enjoyed all these projects. Again, remember to visit Tracy's channel. After you've watched this one, leave me a comment down below. Let me know which project you liked best. Give this video a thumbs up. Come follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. I'd love to have you follow me there as well as my blog if you're a blog person. Please take the time to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future craft videos from me. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye!